What's up everybody? Moving on to the next example, we have to find the points on the function 1 over 3 x cubed minus 10 x minus 9 over x where the tangent is horizontal. Now if you notice in this question, this function is a combination of a polynomial cubic and a reciprocal function. So there's going to be a lot of algebra in this question and I'll do my best to show all of the steps clearly so you can follow along smoothly. Now the first step I'm going to take is I'm going to find the general slope of the tangent formula at an x value of a and to do that we're going to use the difference quotient. So the first thing I'm going to do because it's going to take a lot of algebra to find f of a plus h an expression for that term I'm going to do it on the side here. And to find that f of a plus h, we have to plug in a plus h for all the x values in the function. So we would have 1 over 3 a plus h cubed, which I plugged in a plus h for x, minus 10 bracket a plus h, minus 9 over a plus h. Next step, you want to take that a plus h cubed and expand it. So I did that in the bracket here. Now, you got to be careful. You don't want to just take this... Uh, power to the 3 and just distribute it in the bracket. You have to rewrite this unfortunately as a plus h, a plus h, a plus h and then you have to foil out all these brackets and if you do that this is what you would end up with. And then expanding everything so distributing this 1 over 3 inside the bracket and then distributing this negative 10 inside the bracket we would end up with 1 over 3 a cubed plus a squared h plus a h squared plus 1 over 3 h cubed minus 10 a minus 10 h minus 9 over a plus h and unfortunately there are no like terms here that we can simplify further so this here represents the whole f of a plus h term. So then taking that whole expression and putting it in the bracket here, so this whole bracket here represents f of a plus h in the formula. And then we have to subtract f of a. And f of a, we would just plug in a for the x's in the function. So we would simply get 1 over 3 a cubed minus 10a minus 9 over a. So this here, this bracket, and make sure you do put it in brackets because you're subtracting that whole expression. This is f of a. And then all of that will still be all over h because we're still working with the difference quotient. f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. Now when we distribute this negative inside this bracket, we would have minus 1 over 3a cubed plus 10a plus 9 over a. And luckily, there will be some terms that uh, cancel out and our life will be a little bit easier. So this 1 over 3a cubed and this 1 over 3a cubed will cancel out. And then this minus 10a and then this positive 10a will turn positive when we distribute the negative inside the bracket. Those will cancel out as well. So then simplifying all that, we would end up with this expression simplified so far. And already things are looking a lot better. There's a lot less terms to deal with. Now, same goal, we still want to get rid of that h in the denominator so we can then plug in 0 for h to get that general slope formula. So what we have to do usually is factor out an h and notice how this term, this term, this term, and this term have an h, but these terms, they don't have any h's in the numerator. So we can't factor out an h from these two terms here. But if we can maybe combine these two terms into one fraction, maybe we'll end up with an h in the numerator and then we can factor out an h from all the terms and then cancel out that h in the denominator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that minus 9 over a plus h plus 9 over a and I'm going to simplify it on the side here, try to combine it into one fraction just so we don't have to keep rewriting all these other terms. So having this, the common denominator is going to be a times a plus h. We'll just multiply those two denominators. And now since we're multiplying this a plus h by a, we would multiply the numerator by a as well. So we'd have negative 9a plus 9 bracket, and then this uh, 9 will multiply by a plus h because we multiplied this uh, denominator by a plus h. So that would be a plus h. And then if we distribute this 9 inside the bracket, what will end up happening is the negative 9a and the positive 9a, those will cancel out and we'll just be left with a 9h all over a bracket a plus h. 
So this here, this term, represents these two terms here. So we can just plug that term in for those. So then simplifying everything so far, we got the limit as h goes to zero of a squared h plus a h squared plus one over three h cubed minus 10 h plus nine h over a bracket a plus h. And this is still all over h. And now notice how each of these terms in the numerator, they have an h, including this last term that we simplified to have an h in the numerator. So now we can factor out an h from all of the terms and then the h's or the h in the denominator will cancel out. So then continuing that up here, factoring out the h, notice how now the h's cancel out and we would be left with the limit as h goes to zero of a squared plus a h plus one over three h squared minus 10 plus nine over bracket a bracket a plus h. And now we could plug in zero for h. So this term would go to zero, this term would go to zero. And then in the bottom here, you would have a times a because this h goes to zero as well. So this all simplifies to a squared minus 10 plus nine over a times a would just end up being a squared. So this expression here represents the general slope of the tangent at an x value of a for this function. So we can find the slope of the tangent at any a value by just plugging in that a value in this expression. Now, what are they asking for? Find the points on the function where the tangent is horizontal. So they're not asking for the slope of the tangent at a specific point. They're asking at what points does a specific tangent occur? So we're gonna have to take this equation and make it equal to something and then solve for A. We're solving for the points. But what do we make it equal to? Well, if a tangent is horizontal, What's the slope of that tangent going to be? What's the slope of a horizontal line? Well, we know that the slope of a horizontal line is equal to zero. And that is our final second step. We take the slope equation from step one and make it equal to zero. And now we just solve for A. Now notice how this equation a cannot be zero. So we know that that can't be a solution because nine divided by zero would be undefined. And that makes sense because if you look back to our original function, we have this nine over x here. So notice how x can't be zero for this function. There's going to be a vertical asymptote there because the x value or the function will be undefined at that x value. So before we solve anything, you want to state that restriction. And how would we solve this? We got a squared minus 10 plus nine over a squared and it equals zero. Well, if we multiply both sides by a squared, what will happen is when we distribute this a squared inside the bracket, this a squared in the denominator will cancel out. It will go away and then we won't be dealing with any variables in the denominator. So if we do that, distribute this a squared inside the bracket, we would have a to the power of four minus 10 a squared, and then a squared times nine over a squared, that would just give us nine. And then on the right side, a squared times zero, that just stays as zero. So now we just have a quartic function and we have to factor it to solve for that a value. So a couple things you can do, you can do factor theorem. You might have to go and back and review advanced function videos where you pick a bunch of A values and then make, one, make the uh, function or this equation equal to zero and then you do long division. But another way you can do it is if you notice this sort of resembles a quadratic. So if we introduce another variable, let's say we let M equal A squared, we can rewrite this as m squared minus 10m plus nine, and that is equal to zero. So we just plugged in uh, an m value for any a squared. So this a to the power of four is m squared, because m squared would be a squared uh, to the power of two, which would give us a to the power of four. Then this a squared turns to m, the nine is just the same, and the zero is the same. And now, we're left with a pretty smooth quadratic. 
and this factors into m minus 9 and then m minus 1 and that is equal to 0. So from that it's easy to tell that m is equal to 9 and m is equal to 1. Those are the solutions for this quadratic. So I wrote those solutions up here. However, we're not solving for m, we're solving for a. So we have to sub back in that substitution we made. We let m equal a squared. So we've got to bring that a squared back. So a squared equals 9 and a squared is equal to 1. And then if we solve for a on both sides, we would get a equaling plus or minus 3 for uh, this solution. And then a is equal to plus or minus 1, which is the square root of 1 for that. So these four solutions are the solution to this original equation that we had. And notice how none of these solutions are that original uh, restriction that we stated where a cannot equal 0. So all of these four solutions are legit. Now those a values that we solve for represent the x values on this function where the tangent is horizontal, but they want the points. So we assume that they want the actual coordinates, so we have to find the y values as well. And all you would do is you would take all four of these a values and then sub them into the function to find the corresponding y values. So the four points are negative 3 and 24, and we got this 24 by plugging in negative 3 for all the x's. The other point is 3 and negative 24. Then we have negative 1 and 56 over 3. And then we have positive 1 and then negative 56 over 3. So these four points here represent the answer to our original question. So overall, the concepts aren't too bad. Basically, there's just two steps. You just make a general slope formula and then make that slope formula equal to zero because that's what the slope of the tangent is going to be when it's horizontal. The trickiest part is the algebra in this question, especially this part here. So knowing that you take these two fractions, combine them into one, so then you can uh, factor out that h and then cancel out that h in the denominator. This part here was tricky as well, noticing that this equation we could turn into a quadratic. However, that's not always going to happen. So I would suggest maybe going back and reviewing the factor theorem from advanced functions because you may run into a equation where you can't smoothly introduce another variable and then do it as a quadratic. You may have to go through that factor theorem and factor it. So anyways, you do all that and you get these four points as your final answer. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.